the Fennig Lab at UNC Chapel Hill, it's time to feed the spadefoots. Adult toads have a distinct taste for crickets, while brine shrimp are on the menu for the tadpoles. They're called spadefoots because of this little shovel-like structure on their feet. They're sand burrowers, as you can see here. We sped this video up, but not by much. This research is trying to get at that fundamental aspect of the living world, which is why the world is as diverse as it is. So what could this humble little toad tell us about that? It turns out, a lot. Spadefoots are master shapeshifters, able to make drastic changes to their forms and their behaviors in response to the environment. It's a concept called plasticity. With support from the National Science Foundation, evolutionary biologists David and Corinne Fennig and their teams study spadefoots to better understand the role plasticity plays in evolution. A lot of times in science, if you want to understand something, you go find a really extreme example of the phenomena that you're interested in. The Fennigs go every year to Arizona to study the toads in the field and work with them year-round in the lab. David and his group focus on plasticity in tadpoles. Certain kinds of spadefoots come in two very different types or morphs, omnivores and carnivores. They're so different that for many, many years, for decades, biologists thought that they were different species. Omnivores are the smaller ones. They can eat pretty much anything. But if the tadpole happens to hatch in a pond rich in shrimp, some, but not all, will beef up big time. And it's not just shrimp. Carnivores will eat other tadpoles. But remember, they're the same species. Once they grow to adulthood, they look the same again. There are different strategies for achieving the same end, which is propagating one's distinctive characteristics in the next generation. Back in the lab, they're examining which genes are involved in this plasticity. So we want to know what genes are being turned on and which are being turned off in each of the two morphs. So we want to get insights into what the genes are that might be involved in ultimately producing, determining, or influencing whether you become one morph or the other. Corinne and her team look at a different type of plasticity, behavioral, how adult females choose their mates. They've set up a simulated pond in the lab. The female sits on the platform in the middle of this tank, listening to mating calls from different species of spadefoots. What females will actually do is evaluate the environment and decide whether to mate with males of their own species or change their decision, which is a form of plasticity, and mate with males of the other species. She sees this behavior in the field. This is a so-called plain spadefoot. This guy is a Mexican spadefoot. A female plains can tell them apart by their calls. All things being equal, she'll mate within her own species unless her pond is drying up. Then she might hybridize and mate with the Mexican spadefoot that's evolved to survive in a drier environment. If the pond is shallow and is going to dry up really fast so that if they mated with their own species, those tadpoles would die because they wouldn't get out, then they hybridize and they can produce fast developing tadpoles that'll get out. It comes with a cost. If a plain spadefoot interbreeds, all the males hatch from that clutch of eggs will grow up to be sterile. From an evolutionary perspective, it's better for a female to have some offspring that, you know, half of them might be sterile, but the females are going to be able to breed, and that's better than having no offspring at all. The Fennigs say understanding plasticity is important because variation between individuals is what spurs the evolutionary process. You know, traditionally we just assume that the reason that individuals vary is because they have different genes. And what we want to know is, well, is there more to variation than just genes? Turning to the little spadefoot toad for insights into the interplay between genetics, behavior, and the environment. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.